Well, good morning, New Beginnings Wesleyan Church family. Welcome to our online service for Sunday, July 12th, 2020. And I uh, just want to thank you and welcome you uh, here today. And a couple things to get us started this morning. Uh, my name is Johnny Burke, and along with my wife Chelsea, we are your co-pastors at New Beginnings Wesleyan Church. And uh, most recently, in the last few months, ever since Shelter in Place has been around and we've been dealing with this pandemic, we've had a after-church Zoom hangout. And uh, frankly, over the last month, it hasn't been uh, widely attended. So we are not going to have a Zoom hangout, but we want to touch base with you. If we haven't talked to you in a week or two, would you give us a call this week or an email or a text and let us know what's a good time to, to have a phone conversation or an email conversation or a personal Zoom hangout. We'd really like to touch base with some of you that we haven't seen in a while. So please do uh, message us. You could do it through the Facebook church page. You could do it on our own personal pages. Uh, you can email us or give us a call or text us, however it works for you. We'd love to see you. And if you're able to, Tuesday night, we are going to have our next uh, prayer time at 7 o'clock on Zoom. The link will be in the comments on Facebook, so you can check that out right now. And then on Thursday night at 7 o'clock, we're going to have another Zoom meeting. It's going to be our weekly Bible study. And this is just a great time to talk about whoever the person is that we talked about in church the week previous. So today, we're going to talk about Titus. And on Thursday, we're going to continue to talk about Titus. So do yourself a favor, read the book of Titus. It's three chapters, about two full pages in the Bible, and mark down some things that strike you, and we can talk about it on Thursday. So, hope you can make those. The link and the information is in the Facebook comments as well. A couple things that I want to talk about and then pray about, and then we'll get into our worship time with Brian and Mary this morning. Uh, first thing is I want to um, let our congregation know uh, that we lost a, a strong member of the community this week that many of you are familiar with. Pastor Ray Wisner, who pastored uh, Marysville Nazarene Church for quite some time. Um, he has been fighting a couple forms of cancer for many years. And um, this last week he went into hospice care. And then on Friday we uh, he went to be with Jesus. And so i just like to lift up in prayer the whole Wisner family, um, all of his girls and their husbands and grandkids and that large family and all those that he affected so much both through his church and also through Faith Christian School where he taught music for many years. So um, we are going to miss him greatly and we just want to lift up the family as they're grieving in this time. Um, they're also celebrating because we know that he is with Jesus now. A um, couple people that we want to keep on the on the prayer list here as a church. Uh, Cecilia, Celia Jolly is still um, really having some stomach issues that um, they have not figured out what's going on yet. And she is nauseated pretty much all the time, having trouble eating, lost a lot of weight. We want to lift her up in prayer. Um, the good thing is that she's had a couple COVID tests and she does not have that. But at the same time, they're still trying to figure out what is going on. So we're going to pray for her this morning. I also want to pray for our friend Jerry Sweely. He's in right out right now. He's been there most of the week. He's got pneumonia, and so he was negative for COVID, which is great, but at the same time, uh, he's dealing with pneumonia, and he has some lung issues to start out with. So we want to lift up our brother Jerry, that he would be able to get those lungs cleared up uh, and be able to get out of there and be able to rest and relax and not have to deal with that. I also want to pray for all the folks that are in right out right now, our local hospital, because... There's 25 people that are in there right now just for this coronavirus, this COVID-19 alone. And about a third of those are in ICU. And so we want to pray that the Lord would heal those people through the doctors there, um, get them out of there. And, and we also want to pray for God's provision for our area to uh, slow down or halt this surge that we've seen lately that we've had to deal with. So this morning I would invite you, um, right wherever you're sitting at, to just uh, close your eyes so that together we can focus on God. And let's lift these things up in prayer this morning. Lord, we come before you right now. And God, we are so thankful that one of your servants is in your presence. We are so thankful for the work that you set out for Ray Wisner to do, Pastor Ray, for so many years and that he did it well. God, we are so thankful for the, the lives touched and the family that, that you just blessed through him. And Lord, we know he's with you now, and we celebrate that. But at the same time, we grieve for those who knew him well, and especially his family. 
We ask that you would be with them and comfort them and lift them up during this time as we continue to celebrate his life and um, right now where he's at. Please be with his wife, Lord, as she's missing her husband of 50-something years, Lord, and ask that you would bless that family tonight. Uh, we've got several people that we know that are sick, and um, one of the top of the list for us, Lord, is Celia Jolly, who uh, we just love so much, Lord, and she has been going through a lot lately. And I ask, Lord, that you would either heal her and take away whatever's going on, or that you would allow the doctors to be able to see and deal with or treat so that she can feel better and eat normally and um, just relax and not be so nauseated and dealing with pain issues in her stomach. Lord, I ask for a blessing on Celia in your name, Jesus. God, I also want to pray for our brother Jerry Sweely as he's in the hospital right now dealing with pneumonia. And um, God, it's just a, a dangerous thing to deal with, um, with his lungs. And I ask that you would clear out his lungs. Uh, Lord, would you let him be able to walk out of there feeling great, breathing great, and be able to relax and get some peace. Lord, we ask for a blessing that you would allow medications and all the things they are treating with to work and to clear up this infection, this pneumonia right now, so that he would be okay, Lord. And God, our hospital is very, very busy right now, and you know this, Lord, with all the folks that are uh, dealing with this coronavirus, this thing we call COVID-19. Lord, we have so many people both in the ICU and the general hospital, and the numbers have been going up uh, just daily, Lord, and just skyrocketing lately for our area. Lord, we ask for your protection and your blessing and your healing upon those people. We ask that those on ICU, Lord, that you would clear up what's going on with their lungs and take them off ventilators and things like that and, and give them rest and relaxation and heal them, Lord. For all those others, God, we ask that you would heal them up very quickly and get them out of there as well so they can be home with the loved ones. And God, we ask for protection for our area. We ask for um, help in dealing with this, God that we can get a handle on this and be able to treat people and not lose human life, that we would be able to interact closely together again, and that, Lord, you would give us some guidance in this really wild time of what we call this pandemic. Lord Jesus, we need you. We need your healing touch. We need your guidance. We need your peace. We need your love and grace to model for those in this community so that during this time, more would call upon your name, Lord, and to set their eyes upon you. Jesus, we ask for you to work powerfully during this time as we trust in you with all these things. That's why we lift them up in your mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us in prayer. Uh, and we are going to jump into a worship time right now with Brian and Mary. Uh, they'll be sharing with you the names of the songs. So if you want, depending on your computer setup, you might be able to look up the lyrics and be able to sing along to make it a little bit easier. But uh, you might want to stand up. You might want to sit down. But whatever you do... Let's worship the Lord together right now. How's it going there, family? I'm Brian. This is Mary. Good morning. And we're going to be doing the worship set today. And uh, we have three awesome songs, you know. Uh, the first one we're going to be doing is 10,000 Reasons. And, you know, and, and uh, for me personally, that's a very small margin of, uh, of numbers for the reasons I need to, to worship the Lord. You know, uh, the Lord... Is eternal and he goes beyond infinity so you know I have a, about infinity reasons to bless and uh, just worship him but anyway that's our first song is 10,000 reasons our second song is going to be at your feet because that's uh, that's where I want to be is at the feet of oh, Jesus mm. you know and uh, our last song is going to be God with us and I love singing that song because we can just really sing out Emmanuel, you know, and the, the, the sense of freedom and the sense of, um, well, it's a, it's a feeling that I get inside. It just, I love to say it, you know, and it's a, and it's a wonderful song to sing. Ready to worship. Ready to worship. Ready to worship. Ready to worship. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's go. What do you think, Pastor? <laughs> yeah. All right. Worship His holy name. 
shut our mouths but you know it's not going to happen with me mm -hmm. you know nope. I love the worship I love the worship you know it's a big Sing part of my Lord. it's a big part of my faith is being able to worship the Lord and praise and worship Amen. you know and um, and if this is how we have to do it in today's world then this is how we have to do it in today's world because I'm singing for the Lord mm -hmm. with all my heart That's who I do. Yeah, that's what you do. That's how we do it. That is how we do it, right? Yep. And why is that? Because we love the Lord. We, we love the Lord. We like to lay things at His feet. Amen. Right. <laughs>
see that's worth looking our way. We are free in ways that we never should be. Sweet release from the grip of these chains. out of us and you know we just want to just tell everybody you know jesus loves you and we worship love you, him and we miss you you know worship him in your house sing dance 
Eat, drink, and be merry. Because God is with us. We need to always remember that even with everything going on around us. That's right. We still have the freedom to call ourselves children of God. He will comfort you. And He will. You know, just lay it at His feet. And everything will be all right. Like I said, I'm Brian this is Mary, and we want to thank you so much. And at this time, we're going to give it back to our pastor. God bless you. Love you. Well, good morning again, church, and so thankful uh, for Brian and Mary leading us uh, during these online services and also in person uh, in our parking lot service on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Um, just really appreciate their enthusiasm, their love for Jesus, and just uh, being a, a part of leading us in worship during this time. So uh, I'm excited to uh, be able to share again this morning. Uh, if I didn't say so already, my name is Johnny Burke, along with uh, Chelsea. We are your co-pastors at New Beginnings Wesleyan. And, and this entire year, we've been on a journey about testimonies uh, in our sermons every single week. And we've been asking four questions that we really want to keep drilling in because we don't want to be a Sunday club. We want to be a group uh, what we call a body of believers that is getting closer to and learning more about Jesus all the time and helping to spread the message of Jesus to this community. And so there's some questions that we've been asking you to ask yourselves as we ask ourselves the same question as we go through every week. And the first one is this, what did I hear in the scriptures today? Today we're going to be primarily in the book of Titus, just so you know. It's three whole chapters, two pages in most Bibles, so you might want to turn your Bible there and get ready to maybe mark something. Yes, actually write in your Bible. It's okay. Uh, if something that I read today strikes you, that God is putting on your heart. Second question is this, what did the Holy Spirit say to me while the pastor was speaking? Not what did Pastor Johnny say, but what did God specifically impress upon you while the sermon's going on. Make sure you write that down. And if you've been keeping notes over the last several weeks or months, maybe you'll start to see a consistent theme as God is putting something on your life. Next question is important. It's this. What am I going to do about it? If God is impressing something upon you, if He's impressing something about His Word on you and something that needs to either change, expand, become new, get rid of, whatever the case may be, write that down. And the last thing that we want you to know as your pastoral team is, how can we help you with whatever God's putting on your heart? So if there's anything we can do to help you along, getting closer to God and whatever that He has placed upon your heart via His Holy Spirit, please let us know so we can help you in that journey as we all strive to get closer to God and spread the message of Jesus Christ to our community. So those are the questions, and today we're going to be going through, and it's, it's another testimony, if you will. This one's a little different. A lot of times we do uh, what I like to call my air timeline or my, my timeline of events of someone in the Bible, their history, or all those things. Today's going to be a little different. We're going to be talking about Titus. And Titus is right after First and Second Timothy, which we read from last week as we talked about Timothy. So there's a good chance I'll say Timothy in place of Titus this week, just so you know. You can make a mark if I do and correct me later on. But let's do this. Let's read the entire book of Titus to begin today. All three chapters, two full pages in the Bible. Here we go from the book of Titus. This is a letter from Paul, a slave of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ. I have been sent to proclaim faith to those God has chosen and to teach them to know the truth that shows them how to live godly lives. This truth gives them the confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. And now at just the right time, he has revealed this message, which we announce to everyone. It is by the command of God, our Savior, that I have been entrusted with this work for him. I am writing to Titus, my true son in the faith that we share. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior give you grace and peace. I left you on the island of Crete so you could complete our work there and appoint elders in each town as I instructed you. An elder must live a blameless life. He must be faithful to his wife, and his children must be believers who don't have a reputation for being wild or rebellious. A church leader is a manager of God's household, so he must live a blameless life. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered. He must not be a heavy drinker, violent, or dishonest with money. Rather, he must enjoy having guests in his home, and he must love what is good. He must live wisely and be just. He must be... He must live a devout and dis disciplined life. 
He must have a strong belief in the trustworthy message he was taught. Then he will be able to encourage others with wholesome teaching and show those who oppose it where they are wrong. For there are many rebellious people who engage in useless talk and deceive others. This is especially true of those who insist on circumcision for salvation. They must be silenced because they are turning away families from the truth by their false teaching, and they do it only for money. Even one of their own men, a prophet from Crete, has said about them, The people of Crete are all liars, cruel animals, and lazy gluttons. This is true. So reprimand them sternly to make them strong in the faith. They must stop listening to Jewish myths and the commands of people who have turned away from the truth. Everything is pure to those whose hearts are pure, but nothing is pure to those who are corrupt and unbelieving, because their minds and consciences are corrupted. Such people claim they know God, but deny Him by the way they live. They are detestable and disobedient, worthless for doing anything good. As for you, Titus, Promote the kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. Teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely, and you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. Slaves must always obey their masters and do their best to please them. They must not talk back or steal, but show themselves to be entirely trustworthy and good. Then they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive in every way. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world and with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward to, with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, to make us his own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. You must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary, so don't let anyone disregard what you say. Remind the believers to submit to the government, and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Be instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy and we hated each other. But when God our Savior revealed His kindness and love, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior. Because of His grace, He made us right in His sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is a trustworthy saving, and I want you to insist on these teachings so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial for everyone. Do not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing division among you, give a first and second warning. After that, have nothing more to do with them. For people like that have turned away from the truth, and their own sins condemn them. I am planning to send either Artemis or Tychicus to you. As soon as one of them arrives, do your best to meet me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to stay there for the winter. Do everything you can to help Zemus, the lawyer, and Apollos with their trip. See that they are given everything they need. Our people must learn to do good by meeting the urgent needs of others. Then they will not be unproductive. Everyone here sends greetings. Please give my greetings to the believers, all who love us. May God's grace be with you all. That is the entire book 
of Titus right there. All three chapters, two full pages of the Bible, and now you can say you've read an entire uh, book of the Bible in one day. So you can tell all your friends and spread the message of Titus. But what do we know about Titus? Well, we know that he's a close confidant and a co-worker of Paul for sure. He's not as close as Timothy as when we read the scriptures, we see Timothy is around quite a bit more. But he's definitely up there among um, Paul's go-to people to do ministry with. I mean, Paul starts this letter out to Titus, because this is a letter to Titus, saying, My true son in the faith which we share. Now, it's very interesting because this week, just like last week, we never hear Titus's words. We, the trivia question for this week is how many times do we hear Titus quoted, just like last week? Well, I'll give you the answer right away. Zero times. Zero times do we hear Titus actually speak, but we hear Paul say, My true son in the faith which we share. That's big words, and it's very similar. It's a little different than Timothy last week, because Paul said to him, My true son in the faith, and this time he adds, In the faith we share. It's a slight difference. What does it mean exactly? Not really sure. It could be a difference in the background between Titus and Timothy because Titus is a Gentile. He's not of Jewish descent at all. We're, remember last week we talked about Timothy. Uh, he had both Jewish blood and also Gentile blood because his father was a Greek. So there's a little difference. So how do we know that Titus was a Gentile, which is, means a non-Jewish person? Well, if we go to Galatians chapter 2, it's made very clear. Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, is an interesting discussion. Let me read this for you real quick here. It says this. Once again, Paul writing this letter is to the Galatians. He says, Then fourteen years later I went back to Jerusalem again, this time with Barnabas, and Titus came along too. I went there because God revealed me to me that I should go. While I was there, I met privately with those considered to be leaders of the church and shared with them the message I had been preaching to the Gentiles. I wanted to make sure that we were in agreement for fear that all my efforts had been wasted and I was running the race for nothing. And they supported me and did not even demand that my companion Titus be circumcised, even though he was a Gentile. Even that question came up because of some so-called believers there, false ones really, who were secretly brought in. They sneaked in to spy on me and take away the freedom we have in Christ Jesus. They wanted to enslave us and force us to follow their Jewish regulations, but we refused to give in to them for a single moment. We wanted to preserve the truth of the gospel message for you, and the leaders of the church had nothing to add to what I was preaching. By the way, their reputation as great leaders made no difference to me, for God has no favorites. Instead, they saw that God had given me the responsibility of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as he had given Peter the responsibility of preaching to the Jews. For the same God who worked through Peter as the apostle of the Jews also worked through me as the apostle of the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter, and John, who were known as pillars of the church, recognized the gift God had given me. And they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. They encouraged us to keep preaching the Gentiles while they continued their work with the Jews. They only, their only suggestion was that we keep on helping the poor, which I have always been eager to do. This is a great snapshot in time as in this letter... From Paul to the Galatians, he talks about when he went to Jerusalem, and who was with, right there with him? Titus. And what is significant about that? Titus was a Gentile. And what's the difference between Titus and Timothy? Well, last week we read about when Timothy joined Paul in his second missionary journey, and Paul knew that he had Jewish background and, and Greek background. In other words, he was Jewish and Gentile. He had Timothy get circumcised before he went out, probably in order to better communicate to the Jewish people along the way. But now, it's quite a bit later. And we find out that, that Paul has gone back to Jerusalem, and Titus is his guy that's with him. And Titus is a Gentile, and, and you know what? The Jewish church understands, look, to preach the message to the Gentiles, stop trying to change who they are as far as their makeup, their physicality, their background, and just accept them and teach them to be believers in Jesus Christ. We're not going to circumcise them and make them do that anymore. It's very interesting how there's a real change, but Titus is right there, Gentile believer, co-worker with Paul, moving forward and doesn't have to go through that process. And so then we find out that Titus goes on to become a messenger of sorts. And in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, you could look this up if you like, we see him returning to Paul when Paul is at Macedonia, and he's got a report from the church at Corinth. And this is a big deal, because it's not just like a report seeing how the church is going, but Titus brings news that the church at Corinth received the letter that Paul wrote them, one of the Corinthian letters, we call them, and they took 
the rebuking, they took the correction, and they made changes, and they repented of their sins, and they sent back a positive message from Titus, uh, excuse me, through Titus to Paul. And it's a great moment, really, because we see that, that Paul is able to get refreshed on how the church is doing, and who is there with him communicating to the church and bringing that message? Well, it's Titus. So we see that, Paul, that Titus has become like a messenger. And this is an important message he delivers. How valuable was Titus to Paul? Well, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we read exactly in Paul's own words how valuable Titus was. It says this, We are also sending with them another of our brothers who has proved himself many times and has shown on many occasions how eager he is. He is now even more enthusiastic because of his great confidence in you. If anyone asks about Titus, say that he is my partner who works with me to help you. And the brothers with him have been sent by the churches, and they bring honor to Christ. Should show them your love and prove to all the churches that are boasting about you is justified. That's another snapshot of another letter from Paul to the church at Corinth. And he's talking about Titus and says, this guy's proved himself over and over again. And if anybody asks about him, say this. This guy is my partner who works with me to help you. So Titus is a big deal in the church. What a great ministry title. Paul's partner to help others. How does Titus respond to this and to respond to his journey? Well, we, we really never know exactly his response because, like I said earlier, we never hear his voice in the New Testament. We never hear him directly quoted. We don't hear what he thinks or how he enjoys his ministry. We don't hear anything at all. All we know is when we grab into the book of Titus, we find out that he is on the island of Crete, and Paul has left them there to continue to build the church. And when we talk about building the church, Paul doesn't say, hey, go grab some lumber, get some construction, go get some rebar, make sure you get some tools. He says, start to appoint the elders and sink into them because Paul knows that to build the church, you need to build the people. And that's what Titus's job is on Crete. That's where Titus is in the church. His role right now is to expand the church on Crete and to build into the people who ultimately build the church, which is not the building, it's the people. Boy, I miss this all the time. How often do I want to build our church building to make it look better? As soon as we went into shelter in place several months ago, the first thing that we went to doing was was renovating our whole sanctuary. And it is beautiful in there with new carpet, paint, ceiling lights and everything, and we can't even use it right now, really. What we need to do is build more. What I need to do is build more into the people. That's you, the church so that we can continue to grow as a church and stretch out to this community for Jesus Christ. And that's what Titus is doing. So let's let's grab a couple lessons from Titus. A couple lessons from his testimony of his work, if you will. And we only get it through Paul's words, so it's a little bit like last week where you kind of learn some things by inference. But this is something that we learn. He is to go and teach what he has learned. Paul is very clear when talking to Titus that, hey, Titus, you are to go and teach what you've already learned and spread it to the people. If we jump back into the book of Titus and look at Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, read this a few minutes ago and we'll read it again. It says this, As for you, Titus, promote the kind of teaching that ref- a kind of living that reflects wholesome teaching. Teach the older men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. They must have sound faith and be filled with love and patience. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. In the same way, encourage the young men to live wisely. In other words, Paul is saying, Titus, you've learned these things. Now go and teach them the others. Go and spread that message there. Teach it to the the older men. Teach it to the older women so that the younger women can learn. Teach the younger men yourself. Teach them and spread them not just on how to follow God and invite Jesus Christ into their lives and ask for the forgiveness of their sins, but teach them how to live faithfully to God. Don't just say, hey, go and preach, have them raise their hands, invite Christ in their life, ask for forgiveness of their sins, and call it good. 
Go out there and show them how to engage and be, get into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then continue to grow in it. And let that relationship flow through everything they do and the way that they live. Paul's clear-cut message to Titus is to go and teach what you have learned. That's the first lesson for us. Because if we are followers of Christ, then we've learned something. At a bare minimum, if we call ourselves Christians, which means one who follows Christ, then we have learned who Jesus Christ is. That He is the only Son of God. That He came down in the flesh, on our earth. That He gave His life as a sacrifice to cover over our sins. And that if we ask Him to forgive us of our sins, He will indeed do that. And if we ask Him to come in our lives and lead our lives, He will do that. And we will have a place with Him in heaven someday. If you are a Christian, you should know that. If you call yourself a Christian and that is new information, we need to talk because that's fundamental. That's what being a Christian is, is following the Christ. We call Him Jesus Christ. So if you have learned that, then just like Titus, your job is to go out and teach that to others. If you know more, if you know this book from cover to cover, if you know the Bible and God's Word from cover to cover, then the things you've learned, your job is to go out and teach others. And you might say, well, I can't do that. I, I don't get up front. I don't grab a microphone. I don't, I don't record an online service. I'm not a teacher or a preacher. That's okay. You can teach those around you, those in your family, those in your workplace, those close to you, your friends. And maybe the way to teach them is the second lesson that we need to learn from Titus today that Paul teaches them. First lesson is this, go and teach what you've learned. Second lesson is this, the best way to lead is by example. In other words, the best way to teach others around you is by the example you set. Because after those verses I just read, it says this in verses 7 and 8 of the same Titus chapter 2. And you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do affect and reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. See, Paul says, go and teach the things you've learned to Titus. And then he says, but do it this way. Show them by your own actions, by your own life, the things you do, the things you say, the practices you invoke on a daily basis. Don't let them see you on Sunday and then see a completely different you on Monday. Let Christ's love and grace and mercy and let His Holy Spirit flow through you so that when they see you on the other days of the week and they see you out in the marketplace and they see you elsewhere, they will be learning from your example, not just your words that you speak when teaching them. Boy, two big lessons for us from Titus. To go and teach what we've learned and to teach and lead by our example. These are things that any one of us can do. And I, church, I really commend you because I think we're trying to do these things right now. And I want to be totally transparent. We are in a, in a pandemic right now, right? We are doing a lot of different behaviors. And I want to be very, very transparent that I did not choose Titus to preach on today because of any specific passages in it. But I found a couple of interesting passages that leaped out to me today as far as what we're doing. How about this? Titus chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. I read it earlier. Did you catch it? Remind the believers to submit to the government and its officers. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. Church, you're doing a great job right now. We are doing what the government has asked us to do. We're doing outdoor services on Sunday morning. When we sing, we cover our face with masks. We are asking those who have underlying health conditions and those who are, um, you know, have other issues or are up there in age to stay home and protect themselves. We're following every rule that the authorities and the government has set down for us. Because of passages like this where God speaking through, Paul says, submit to the government and its officers. We're doing those things. And why are we doing it? Because we want to be ready to do what is good. When we're outside, when we go to sing, we still cover our, our faces with masks so that we're doing our best not to spit on other people to try and protect them as much as possible from this thing we're still learning about. I know a lot of us don't understand what this thing is. I sure don't. 
but we're going to respect those in authority and we're going to do our best to take measures to do what is good. Because if we do these things and no one gets sick in our church or our community from us, then that's a good thing. And if we don't do these things and it goes the other way, which I pray that it doesn't, that would be a very bad thing. I'm not here to make a political statement and say what we're doing is right and what other churches is doing is wrong. But we are following the words that we see written down. And when God speaks through Paul in this message to Titus and says, submit to the government and its officers, we take that serious. And we want to demonstrate great social witness by doing those things so that we can do the most good. The name of the church is New Beginnings Wesleyan Church. We are not a church that is all about making people Wesleyans. That's our denomination. We love our denomination, and it's great being a part of a greater movement. We are a church that is, is helping people to find Jesus Christ and follow him. But a great role model to us on how to do this is the guy whose name is in the title of our denomination, John Wesley. And John Wesley has often been quoted by saying this, Do all the good you can in all the ways you can to all the souls you can, in every place you can, at all the times you can, with all the zeal you can, as long as you ever can. Can I say that one more time? It's not a biblical quote. It's a quote from a man who sought Christ in a relationship with him with all his heart and preached it to hundreds of thousands, if not millions. And in that, he said, man, we got to do good. So... Do all the good you can, in all the ways you can, to all the souls you can, in every place you can, at all the times you can, with all the zeal you can, as long as you can. Go and do good to all people in all places at all time. So this week, let's take a lesson from Titus, as he was taught by Paul. And let's go out and teach what we have learned. And let's do it by our example. Let's tell people about Jesus Christ and the life-saving gift he gave us by dying on that cross. The eternal life-saving gift. Let's share that with people. And let's not just have them hear our words. Let's have them hear our example as we show love and grace and mercy on them, just like Jesus Christ has given to us. I would really encourage you this week, even if you're sheltered at, 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 in place at home, you can reach out electronically to people email, Zoom messenger. You can call somebody on the phone. You could write a letter. You could wave to your neighbor. Let's teach others what we have learned, and let's do it by our example. Hope you can join us Tuesday night for our prayer time. It's a wonderful time on Zoom at 7 o'clock. And don't forget, Thursday night our Bible study is going to be on this guy, Titus. So if you want to prepare for that, Read two pages in the Bible. You already heard them once this morning. It'd be great to review them and make a marking. Hey, did God say something to you through one of those scriptures that I read through? If you mark something in your Bible, share it on Thursday. Let's talk about it as we continue to grow as believers in Christ and share his message with the community around us. God bless you. Have a great week. Hope to see you later on this week.